I call the Honourable Nanaya Mahuta. Mr Tenakwe. Chair, I couldn't let uh, the comments of the Minister on this particular issue and how it affects a lot of young people in New Zealand go unnoticed because what Labor believes is that the escalating level of youth unemployment is unacceptable in a country like New Zealand where we pride ourselves on being the best place to bring up our kids. And Labor believes that youth rates is no response to, to tackle the real and serious issues of ensuring that our kids have a great future. Youth rates just won't cut it. What we've got to do is we've got to invest in lifting their schools while they're at school ensuring that a lot of our kids stay at school longer, and investing in their training opportunities if we need to, pathway them earlier. And that's why programs like Gateway and STAR, and many schools will tell you throughout the country, they provided real opportunities. Youth rates are not the answer. In fact, employers currently have the ability to introduce a training wage, but they must be committed to investing in the training of that young employee and that starting rate is at $10.40 an hour. But they must continue to invest in the training opportunities for that young people. Now, what we say, what Labor says, is lift the minimum wage to $15 and the Minister's doing nothing about it. What she says is that it's OK to have young people uh, not uh, have their skills invested and let's ship them off to the LSV programmes. Well, actually, we've had feedback in our co communities that it's not all it's cracked up to be. And yes, while there are some young people who are disenfranchised from their community or have been disengaged from education and got onto the programme and had some positive gains long term in terms of employment opportunities, the LSV frankly doesn't cut it. And it doesn't secure that young person a commitment from the Defence Force that they'll get a, get a placement. In fact, I visited a, 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 training, a military training uh, uh, entity and they had around about five kids uh, at the time who were all doing their tests to get into the Navy. Uh, some of them had fallen out of school early. Some were absolutely committed to a future in the Defence Force. Now, you know what I heard? That, uh, a couple of them had done their test, but they were the low, uh, low perform um, at the lower level of the achievement um, standards for the Defence Force, and they just had to wait until the space was available. Now, what they were being told is actually the Defence Forces are taking higher skilled and qualified young people into the Defence Forces, and these young kids that we're talking about, the ones that have been disengaged from school, the ones that are trying to make a start for themselves, they're left languishing. And I suspect the Minister has no sense at all about what's happening with this group of young people. Because if you go and visit private training Order. establishments, Order. Mr Speaker, if members visit private training establishments, they will hear real concerns about the change in which funding for 24 to 18 year olds to secure their level one and two foundation courses, that there are changes afoot that are being introduced by the Tertiary Education Commission. Now that will do nothing to build and invest that will do nothing to build and invest in the skills of those young people so that they can ha have at least the foundation skills to, to scaffold onto a career pathway. Now, what's the government doing about that? Because real solutions for youth unemployment has to ensure that we invest in their skills, that you invest in real opportunities for apprenticeships. Nothing about that. Very silent about the issue of apprenticeships. That, that there are jobs out there. Now, the, the government is also very silent on the Mayor's Task Force for Jobs, which are absolutely committed to ensuring that youth unemployment will be tackled and reduced community by community by community. And that took leadership of the local mayors, where you saw in communities like Te Kwiti youth unemployment down to a level of single figures. Now, that was incredible, because it was a stakeholder commitment to say, this is, this is all of our challenge, but we will commit to it as long as the government can partner it and the business community have to partner it as well. And it was a whole response. Now, the government's very quiet on the Mayor's Task Force for Jobs and, and the achievements of that. And instead, what we're hearing is LSV is the solution for youth unemployment. Well, I think not. There are far too many Māori and Pacific young people who are suffering at the hands of extensive changes in the education sector and the investment and skills sector by this government that has meant that youth unemployment continues to increase and it's unacceptable. And the minister sits there silent.
The Minister sits there silent. Not good enough. The question is that vote employment stand part of the schedule. Those of that opinion will please say aye. To the contrary, no. The, the ayes have it. Party voters call for. The question now is that vote social development stand part of the schedule. Those of that opinion will say aye. Mr Chairman. I call the Honourable Minister.